Hey guys, Caleb here. Told you I was going to follow up when I found some more time and I wasn't trapped in my work truck for 12 hours a day like I am most days. So today happens to be that day. I'm back in my apartment. Some free time I thought I'd show you what we had talked about earlier in terms of carrying a single action revolver. And by carrying, I mean concealed carrying as a daily carry. This is the gun that I choose to carry as my daily carry gun. It's a Ruger Vaquero, three and three quarter inch barrel. Verify that it's unloaded so you all can see it. Six empty holes, so we know it's unloaded. This is the gun. This is the gun I chose. As you can see, it has the bird's head grip, which is curved and smooth and ideal for not really printing underneath a coat like the old plow handle Vaqueros and Colts are. See, high polished, gorgeous also actually makes it really easy to clean you wipe it off and it stays pretty darn clean well as you can see it does have called the super blackhawk hammer which is widened and lowered and makes it a whole lot easier to cock the gun we've already verified that it's unloaded so you can see now something you will notice it is very easy to cock i have gone ahead and i've put a set of wolf springs in this thing i've lightened the hammer pull i've lightened the trigger pull Overall, just smoothed it up, made it a nice, sweet cocking, sweet shooting, all-around gun. It's great. This one is chambered in 357. Let's talk about the holster I use. This is the holster that a gentleman out of Tennessee made. As you can see, it's pretty simple. It's pretty basic. It doesn't have a lot of bells. It doesn't have a lot of whistles, all that stuff. It works, so it's fairly thin considering the fact that it does conceal a single action revolver which has a pretty large cylinder full of 357s. The clip that retained it to the belt. In the video you can see the texturing. It is rough out. So this is the fact, this is the side that sits against the dim of my jeans. This is the side that sits against my undershirt. And as you can see it's got a nice sweat guard on here that keeps the gun from contacting your skin and rubbing and making it all around a bad situation because it hurts. So, I'm personally very impressed. I like the way it fits. I like the way it carries. As you can see, it goes in just perfect and holds supremely tight for what it is. The gentleman that did it, he boned the leather into the cylinder. I mean, it's just perfect. All around, it's like a glove for this gun. This is the holster that I choose if I'm going to carry inside the waistband. I tuck this into my jeans. I put a cover shirt on this side and I throw my button down shirt over the top of it and it goes down to about here. So you'll never even see the gun. And you can see it's got a little bit of a cant to it, not a whole lot, but just enough to get the grip forward so you can snag it with your fingers. And with that being said, before I got this one, in the meantime while I was waiting on this one, I went ahead and got a commercially available holster that goes outside the waistband on the belt. That would be this one. This one's called the Galco Wheel Gunner. Now this actually particular holster was made for a gun with a five and a half inch barrel because the availability for commercial holsters for the three and three quarter inch barrels is not very great. So I chose this one. I did a little uh, homemade hillbilly leather work in and cut the end off so that I didn't have two and a half inches of holster hanging down. This is the one I chose. As you can see, it's a little bit different. This belt slide here, actually goes on your belt and holds it and the holster just slides into it. Just by removing this snap you can slide the whole holster free from your belt and leave the slide on. That's intended so that if you're going to go inside the bank where you know you can't conceal a gun and you're not supposed to have one, you just unsnap one and drop the whole thing and you don't have to unthread your belt which is kind of a major pain in the butt sometimes. So I chose this one just for the looks and style and it's about the only one that actually covered the gun and wasn't built to look like the John Wayne ones, which isn't necessarily the greatest for concealed and carry. So with this gun, it does still have the old style hammer, hammer thong. It just retains it. But as you can see, when the gun goes in, it covers the entire cylinder. The hammer snap goes on and it's perfect. It does leave the trigger guard exposed, but being how the hammer is covered, retained and the entire cylinder is covered nothing's going to get in here and set the gun off i think it's great this holster since i've got my inside the waistband has been regulated back to outside the waistband if i'm going to go hunting if i'm going to go fishing if i'm going to take the kids for a walk in the woods what have you it's 
my field carry holster now. I think it works great for that. It's still a great gun for it too. So now that we've talked about that, let's get the ammunition. I told you I carry Remington HTPs, as you can see, 357 Magnum, 125 grain. And they come in a nice yellow and green box. And they say HTP, semi jacket with hollow point on the side of them. Here's the individual round I pulled out of the gun. And as you can see, they come with the nickel coated cases. Nice, nice round in there. And overall, they're just a nice put together. Like I said, I've shot several boxes of these. I've never found any that have the cases messed up. I've never found any that have primers messed up. I've just never actually seen that issue. So, this, these are the ones I choose to carry. And they're not necessarily the strongest 357s out there, but they're the best for personal defense. Not against a bear, not against a moose, personal. Human to human contact, which is what I'm more likely to have to deal with if a situation were to arise. So I chose rounds for human contact. As you can see, I think it works pretty good. I think it all is a pretty good combination and it just goes together good. The gun, I haven't found any issues from Ruger. I think it's just sweet. It's fairly simple. It's got a nice hammer pull. It's got a nice trigger pull. Overall, I think it's just perfect. Well, as you can see, it's fairly simple. Now, one thing that you will notice on the short barrel guns is you have the short ejectors. So the ejector will not actually kick an empty case all the way out. So you have to physically grab it. So maybe not ideal, but after I've expended the sixth round, I don't plan on having to reload if I'm in a gun fight. Because if I am, I'm probably already up Shit's Creek anyway. So I'm banking that six is going to be enough. Maybe it won't be. Time will tell. I hope it's enough. I really do. I want to keep staying alive for my wife and kids. Oh. The grips on this gun, they're made by Altamont. I think they're neat. I would like to try to find a set of custom grips once they start turning them out for the bird's head grip. I've already emailed them once. They're supposed to email me back when they start producing them. They said it should be sometime this year with the availability of all the new bird's heads from Ruger. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. In the meantime, I'm still going to keep looking around. If I find a custom set, I might go ahead and get them, but I'm really picky when it comes to grips. They got to be exactly what I want. I'm not willing to compromise. In the meantime, I don't have to compromise with these. They fit my hand pretty good. I got pretty good sized hands. And as you can see, wrapped around the gun, it still leaves even enough room for the pinky. And it, it just fills your hand perfectly. So as you can see, there's enough space on it. It just works. I can do it with one hand. I can do it quickly with one hand if need be. I just can't do it in my apartment like that. So that's the combination you see. This is the holster. If anybody's interested, I do have the gentleman's contact information. I have spoken with him, and he would be more than happy to make one. He does custom make them, so there is a little bit of a turnaround time, but he does excellent work. He's really, really great gentleman to work with overall. He actually pays for shipping. He's a great guy to talk to. He'll, he understands the working man's problems, which is what I am, and that's what he is. So that's why I think we hit it off so great. He's a great holster maker. In the future, I'm going to be hitting him up for a lot of different stuff because I really like the stuff that he turns out. It's quality. He cares about his work, but more importantly, he cares about his customers, which I think is excellent because that's what business is all about, especially small business. That's why you choose to support, support small business. I go out of my way to make sure that I am supporting a small business, if it's at all possible, because I don't like big businesses. I don't like Walmart. I don't like Sam's Club. It's just not something I prefer to spend my money, especially on my money, on my hobbies, which is guns. I really don't like supporting the big companies that don't care, because a lot of times it's some of those big companies that tend to have politicians that vote for them more than they do the people. A small business, I've never known a small business, at least in my local area, to go against the Second Amendment rights of the people. They always stand up for the people. That's why I choose to support them. That's why I think you should too. This is Caleb. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope everybody has a good evening. And I, it's Sunday, so I hope everybody's having a good weekend. Until the next time, God bless.